everyone, and welcome to this edition of my VIP Masterclass course. Today, I'm going to be talking about intervals and how to improve your skills when you are dealing with large intervals. And this is requested by several of our VIPs who participated in the webinar last weekend. Thank you very much. We did do some work on intervals there. And as promised, I'm making a video now to carry on from there and to also summarize what we covered in that webinar. So when I talk about the lips, the aperture, the embouchure, when it comes to changing pitches, especially over large intervals, I like to remind us all about the analogy, the metaphor of the lips being like a string. So for example, if you have a string this long or this long on a violin, for example, however long it is, and the violinist plays a note, and if they were to put their finger down halfway on that fingerboard, the vibrations would automatically go twice as fast, which would give them an octave higher. Also, they can make their pitch go higher by tightening the string when they, when they tune up. So that's what they're doing. So what we want to do with our lips is we want to make a combination of tightening them up as we go up, loosening them as we go down, and also the part of the lips that are vibrating across the mouthpiece. When we're going higher, we can create a smaller aperture, so a smaller length across the lips will be buzzing. All right, I hope that makes sense. If that was a little bit of a blur, I'll be um, reviewing this as we go along. So, as we're going to be changing pitch primarily by tightening this up and making the aperture smaller, we will be able to achieve octave jumps and even more with minimal to no movement with the jaw or the tongue. Now, probably when you were starting out, you were probably told by your teacher to move your jaw higher and raise your tongue when you play a higher note. I know I was by my first trumpet teacher when I was in the fourth grade in elementary school, and that was fine because before the lips uh, are developed and the muscles in the lips are developed, we need anything we can to get higher. So what we do is we close up to play higher. As we develop and our embouchures become stronger, we are then able to control our ups and downs and our intervals using more muscles here and less moving around. So let's start, let's work on this. Now, before we go to the wide intervals, let's work on our small intervals so that we can employ what we are doing on our smaller intervals gradually to our larger intervals. So what we're gonna do is start on our fundamental note and we're gonna play our fundamental note, a half step higher, fundamental note, whole step, fundamental note, etc. Here we go. And, and beyond pretty soon in this video, don't worry. So what I'm doing here is I am getting my best sound I can on my fundamental note. And then I want to duplicate that on the C sharp. And the D. And I want to do that by keeping the aperture as it was on C for the other notes. And then the pitch will be slightly changed by the automatic pilot of the brain, so you don't need to think about it too much. Go for your sound and try to keep your tongue and your mouth set up for that first note. So let's do that. C, C sharp, C, D, or open, half step, open, whole step. Good. that interval fifth, whatever that is. And if you have a mirror, look in the mirror and 
Try your best not to move your jaw and think about where your tongue is. Try to keep your tongue exactly in the same position. And then the lips, like I said, those two factors, a little bit tighter, aperture slightly smaller, like an automatic camera. It will in for you. But lock this in, lock the tongue down. One more time. in the webinar, a double bass or a cello is not going to get smaller as it goes higher. Only the string will get smaller or tighter or a combination of both of those to get the instrument higher. But the box itself, the violin or the cello or the double bass, whatever it is, stays the same size. So I like to think of our mouth is that string instrument. So as the strings here get tighter and a bit shorter where it's vibrating, this stays the same. Imagine if a double bass got smaller as it went higher. What would that do to the sound quality? And as orchestral players, band players, and to a degree in your solo playing as well, you want to keep that consistent sound throughout your range as much as you can. Now, when we have really big jumps and we start going really high and really low, I like the analogy of changing the setup from a double bass, then a cello, then a viola. As for tuba players, not violin. But if you're a horn or trumpet player, yes, violin. And maybe not double bass for you, all right? Depending on how low you are. So think of this analogy again. Double bass setup. Can you work within that? Let me get to the next area. A cello setup, sure. A little bit more in. More focused than viola for your absolute upper register for the tuba. All right, I hope this analogy is working for you. So what we want to do is within a range of about an octave or slightly over an octave, like an octave and a half, we want to try to be as, as still as possible. Now, when we come down from super high to super low, we are gradually going to be opening up, gradually opening up. And then when we go up, we're going to be gradually closing up a little bit, but the least amount as possible, all right? So now we're gonna go from this G, and we're gonna go G, F sharp, G, or from your fifth of your fundamental, open, second, open, first, open, one and two, or if you're playing trombone, the equivalent on your slide position. All right, here we go. <laughs> to the double bass, all right? That's minimal. And you want to set up for the bottom notes. So what we want to do is when we have these octave jumps or more, we really want to establish the sound quality and the setup from the bottom notes, all right? So let's do this on the G. Fifth G, G, or fifth, fifth of the open note. to have no movement in the jaw. There might be a tiny bit, like I said, broken record here. The least amount of movement here, the better your flexibility is going to be. All right, now we're going to start going beyond an octave jump. A big tip here, when you have intervals more than an octave, what you want to do is maybe take the upper one down an octave or the lower one up an octave. So you're just jumping seconds, thirds, fifths. And then when you get that in your head, then go back and play them as written. All right, so we're going to get ready for that. We're going to play open, open, half note, open, whole step, open, etc. until we get to the whole octave, and then we will expand. Follow me. We are going to start now an octave above our fundamental note. So for me, it's a C. <laughs> So this is another trick in intervals. 
when you're jumping from up to down to up, bounce off that lower one a little bit like a spring. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing. Now we're gonna start expanding, but we're gonna start a half step higher and we are going to do the same pattern going to our final metal note. So in my case, it's a D flat, C, D flat, D, D flat, and then down to the C. So then we will be doing an interval jump of slightly more than an octave. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> 